Hey guys, how you doing? So I've been messing around with Oracle Express for a few days now. I started with the uh, installation on Windows. I already uploaded a video on that. But I found out that Command Prime is very limited. And uh, I tried a couple of workarounds to enable an SH server to the, uh, the Windows server or using some other terminal emulators and using PuTTY and uh, Download Server. And I couldn't really get around a good uh, command line option to access Oracle and work with uh, on Windows. So I just ditched that after many days of trying and I decided to install uh, the same Oracle Express but this time on a Linux based distribution. So um, the Oracle website provides a very nice RPM already set up uh, to be easily installed on a CentOS platform. So that's what I'm going to be using. As uh, you can see I'm using 5.8. If you try to download 6, you may get some errors and some problems, especially because the libc component that uh, they're asking for is very old. It's something like version 2.2, and uh, Oracle, uh, I mean CentOS 6, has like 2.12. So you may have some errors installing on 6. It was not uh, officially supported last time I checked, but to get installed on 5.8 is is pretty easy as uh, you will see. So um, I have my PuTTY already going to the server and this is just the commands that you're going to need. I'm going to put it on the um, comments on the video. So I'm first going to install a couple of um, uh, required, let me log in here first, uh, packages and utilities. You can see that we're installing libaio, uh, bcflex and unzip. Uh, just to uncompress the um, RCAP file that we get from the Oracle website. So I'm going to start installing that. That should just take uh, a minute. Now, while I'm installing that, I'll go ahead and um, transfer the RPM file already downloaded here. So we just connect here. Okay, let me balance that. Wrong password. Okay, that's fine. Also, hmm. okay, nice and easy. So I already I'll have this free downloaded. So you can see it's a um, RPM file for 64 bits. This is a 11.2 version. So I'll just go ahead and uh, go back to the root folder via WinSP. And that should just take a minute. Okay, so the download is completed. Let me um, go ahead and... Um, Going to root folder. Uh, so we have a zip file. Let me just unzip this one. Okay. It should also just take a minute. Okay, so that's press. Now let me go ahead and now. Uh, uh, before doing that, you can see that this created this one folder. Go under the, this one folder, and uh, you should have the RPM now, so you can execute. Just install the RPM. You should start extracting the RPM and install it. So it's a very easy process. As you can see, it already tells you that you need to run this uh, a script to configure the database. So it's going to ask you some questions to select the ports for the listeners and um, the password for the system account you're going to use to connect. 
and whether you like uh, Oracle to be started on boot up. So I'm just gonna stick to defaults. It's gonna take a couple minutes here, so I'll just gonna pause the video for a minute. Okay, so that's installed now. Um, the last, uh, one last thing you like to do is to add the binaries of uh, Oracle to your path so you can work with it. Like for example, you run the command SQL plus, you'll get this error, the bash is not able to find it. So what I do for that is, uh, depending on the user you're working with, uh, you can go to the home uh, folder for the user. In, in case it's root, it would be um, forward slash root. And uh, you can add to the bash profile um, the following script. So right after the export path, you can do an insert and um, include this script that Oracle provides to set up the uh, environment variables. So you can right click that and um, that should give you um, everything that is required so you can work with um, Oracle. So I'm just going to let it reboot so you can see how to connect to the database after it's back. Okay, so it's booting up now. Let's start loading some kernel modules, some other low level things. At the very end of the boot up process, when it's starting to go into, I think, is uh, run level f 5 or 3, uh, you will see Oracle trying to boot up. But it's the last process that is booted up. Here, start, start um, we're not good at mounting the file systems. We're going to run level three. Some other demons. And uh, then we start putting up the Oracle instances. Depending on how much uh, memory Oracle needs to allocate, this can take uh, a little bit longer, but we should be ready here in just a couple more seconds. All right, so the server is up again. Let me just reactivate my session. All right, so I'm in. So I could just uh, do something like uh, SQL plus. Uh, no log. And from here, I'm on uh, your call console, so I could do like con um, with the system account, and then put my password. And uh, I guess the password is wrong. Let's try that again. Okay, so I'm connected. And uh, from here you can do all sorts of things. Star, looking at all the objects that you have created. And, uh, start creating your own users. Out and then go back and uh, connect with the other account that you just created. And you should have no objects. And, uh, clean slide to work with. And um, thanks to the tool. You can see all these files that Oracle created that are running under the Oracle user. 
Uh, that's just the instance for database and I'm gonna have some follow-up videos of how to tune it and how to start uh, creating views and tables and triggers and uh, some other constructs for a call. So iPhone, I hope you find it uh, informative.